It is a Shakespeare who perceive life as a stage. You make your entrance, you make your performance, and then you take your exit. And that was his summary of life. The entrance, the performance, and the exit. But with Jesus Christ, there is a little more. Yes, there is the entrance. There is the performance and the exit. But the exit is only for a time. There is going to come a change. And life everlasting will be for those who love and serve him, Jesus Christ. We believe the one we are here to pay tribute and respect to has gone beyond the preparation for just this life. But she made preparation for the life to come. As we are gathered here, we will give God thanks for her life. We will seek comfort from the Lord Jesus Christ. And also we will be inspired to prepare for the life to come. So I welcome each one of you and those who are joining by Zoom to this celebration of life for Nureta Gertrude Berlin. The program will go as you have it outlined. We will have the invocation and prayer, which I will now do. After that, we will have the hymn, How Great Thou Art, and the program will follow as we have it outlined. So will you now bow your heads with me as we pray? Almighty God and our gracious heavenly Father, here we are this afternoon gathered to reckon with our mortality, knowing, Lord, that we are subject to death, to the ills of life, to the struggles and the pain. But, Lord, in the midst of all these, there is a hope that we have that has come through Jesus Christ. So we ask that you will be with us now. We ask that you will overshadow us with your presence and give us comfort. Inspire hope, I pray. And bless the family and all who are gathered here and who are participating in this service. So that when you come, we would have been faithful to you for you to usher us into life everlasting. Be with us now again, we pray in this service we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Those of us who can stand, I think it would be appropriate for us to stand and as we sing this hymn, How Great Thou Art. Sister Theophane will help us and lead us in this song. Oh, my God, and I some wonder, consider all the words that hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thank you. 
You may be seated. Thank you. We will now have scripture followed. Good evening, everybody. Um, my lesson tonight, with today, will be from Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek, and lowly in heart, and he shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Auntie, you're gone, but you will never be forgotten. Rest in peace. Good afternoon. I've been doing tributes here from family members from Jamaica and Canada. Um, from niece Vonnet, husband Tian, Debbie, and Duane niece-in-law, grandniece, and nephew. The role of an aunt is unique for her loved ones. Let's face it. There is a combination of mother, sister, and friend. Aunt Nora held an even higher post in her family though. She was indeed the matriarch to the very end. Her home was a hub for many holidays and gathering. Her heart was a source of surprise visits and gifts. Her words were the ones you would be sure to remember whenever the situation involved some form of mischief. She loved, she laughed, she collected family photographs, she provoked. She had the proverbial, sorry, proverbial iron fist. She encouraged, she provided, she surely ran her own race. Today we gather in thanksgiving for the life of Miss Naretta acknowledging that no one can ever take her place. From her niece and nephew-in-law, Jenny and Alvin, my beloved aunt and aunt-in-law, you were there when I was born. You assisted in my upbringing into the woman that I am. Your acceptance and love for my husband, Alvin, made made us feel that God has been with us on all of life's journey. We are sorry we cannot be at your home going. May the Lord grant unto you eternal rest. From her nephew, Ravel Plummer, Aunt Naretta, God knows it's best for you, darling. May your soul rest in peace. 
thoughts of you will hang around for a long, long time. Right on, my dear aunt, sadly missed. From Cousin Heather, family and friends, Nora and I met over 50 years ago in one of her visits home. We instantly developed a close bond which never waved over the years. One of the most caring and thoughtful person I have come to know. Nora's devotion and dedication to her family and friends was such that you always knew you had her support through thick and thin. After meeting Nora, my visits to Miami were never the same. On my first visit back from meeting our cousin, I made the mistake of trying to stay in a hotel. <laughs> she would have no such thing. She collected me and said, hotel? Suffice it to say, my subsequent visits were spent with Nora in her home, where she made me feel perfectly welcome each and every time. One of my favorite memories of Nora was when myself and my sister attending our cousin Norma's wedding in Toronto. We were all part of the bridal party, with Nora being the matron of honor. Being able to celebrate the occasion with treasured family memories was a gift. I will always hold dear. Nora joins my sister in a well-deserved rest after 11 years of a long fought illness. And though I will miss her dearly, I am confident of her reunification in Christ. Sleep well, cousin Nora. You will continue to live in my heart. And all those who love you, Sorry, and all those whose lives you have touched while you are here. From Cousin Norma and family in Toronto. Once in a while, someone comes, sorry. Once in a while, someone special comes along and makes a significant impact in my life. Nor was one of those special people. Nor, you blessed my life in ways you probably didn't realize. Giving yourself in countless thoughtful ways. For 65 years plus, Nur and I have been around each other. As a big cousin, I loved and admired her. Aunt Nur, as everyone called her, was such an amazing lady, full of love and kindness. I admired her great love for family and friends alike. She was one person who would give the shirt off her back. And I know as I'm wearing a dress off her back right now. <laughs> I thought it would be fitting wearing this on this occasion so she might smile down from heaven. We drifted apart after leaving Jamaica. She chose the United States while I went north to Canada. We still remain close by the phone as life would allow us. 50 years ago, I called her to say I'm getting married and that I wanted no other than her to be my maid of honor. Without putting much thought to the request, she agreed and was right by my side. I have regrets that at the end, I was not able to spend some time at her side due to COVID. I kept her in prayer, and I know that God's hands are bigger than mine to hold comfort and be by her bedside at all times. To know love and to know Nur, you'll understand what I'm saying. And my family do. She knew that we loved her. As it is said, life must go on. But for loved ones, it's hard. We must find courage and hope in discovering that others have traveled a similar path and have found a clearing. Jesus says in John 16, 22, now is your time to grieve. But I will say, you again and you will rejoice. No one will take away your joy. So then to the family I say, we will not grieve as those who have no hope. Now that my dear cousin is in God's hands, we will leave you with the hope that we will see each other again in glory. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord for they rest from their labor. Good night, Nar. From niece Zena and grandniece and nephew. Dearest Aunt Nora, aunts hold a special place in the hearts of their nieces and nephews. They are often a source of good 
unbiased advice and wonderful friendship filled with love and laughter. Coping with the loss of an aunt can be especially difficult. You were the true definition of a special aunt. All our conversations would start off with you asking, so what's new? Well, Aunt Nur, that's what's new is now. We have lost you. That for us is truly heartbreaking. We are, however, grateful to have had you in our lives and we would cherish the many beautiful memories we have of you and with you. Rest in pe perfect peace. From Beverly Plummer, cousin. Thanks be to God who has given me the opportunity to visit Aunt Nar in the past couple of years. She has been a fighter. I have watched her all these years going through her pains and discomfort, but never missing an appointment with her doctors. Whenever I visited her, she was always so happy to see me and appreciated of all, all that I did. Whenever it comes to preparing her meals, she was always undecided. Mm -hmm. So, as she said, I made up her mind for her. Mm -hmm. And she would jokingly say, take it or leave it. But she enjoyed every last bit of it. And she would say, Beverly, don't leave me. During the last few months, she utilized every source to locate me to ask that I come and help her. I eventually came, did the best I could in preparing her meals and feeding her. I never knew it would be the last. Her Lord was ready for her to leave this world. You are sadly missed, Aunt Nor. May your soul rest in peace. So now that I've said everything for everybody, let me see for myself. When you come to the end of a perfect day and you sit alone with your thoughts while the sun goes down with a flaming ray, And dear friends have to part. Well, Aunt Nur, Noretta G, Miss Berlin, mm -hmm. Sister Berlin, mm -hmm. Miss Legalistic. <laughs> Today signifies the end of our memorable journey together. 1993, was a year our friendship began. My sister Norma, who lives in Canada, came to visit and we went to visit Nar. Our visit with her was the adhesive force of our relationship and caring. I analyzed Nar on that first visit and I came to the conclusion she was a caring, affectionate, concerned yet bossy cousin who behaved as if she was the decision maker for the entire family. She just loved to run things as she rocked to her own beat and quick to point out the legal aspect of everything. She loved the company of family and friends. A visit with her meant servings of her signature rice and peas, stew peas, fried fish, all served with love. And when we couldn't fit even a message, she would say, is that all you're eating? Doesn't it taste good? Is something wrong with my cooking? We all looked forward to the holidays and she started planning months ahead. She'd say to me, try coming down here at least a week before. Often I had to remind her that I'm an employee, not retired. She enjoyed and showed appreciation of my cooking and only one time. She told cousin Dick that my turkey was salt. <laughs> you know, he didn't hold the story. He took it right back to me. She jokingly tell family members to bring their own food when they're visiting. And if we did, she wasn't happy. She'd make requests like, bring me the biggest gala apples, and the sweetest juicy oranges you can find, 
but not like the ones that you took from my brother, as he couldn't extract the juice from them. Aunt Nur was a stush woman. We went to conference in Atlanta. Lunch was prepared at home, but the conference morning, she was so dolled up, she fought my idea of bringing a lunch bag. And Blayton, to Blayton told me that if I did, she would stay far away from me. <laughs> well, Noretta gets what Noretta wants. So the bag was left in the refrigerator. Lunchtime at conference, she came over to me and said, so what's for lunch? <laughs> I munched on my protein bar and pointed to the snap machine. She was mad with me and said, I've never eaten from those things. Don't even know how to operate them. So I walked over and I helped her and she got her snack without any further complaint. But every opportunity I got after that, you know, I'd rub it in. Mm -hmm. Narita G was a health freak, walked several hours daily, ate the so-called healthy foods, she questioned her decline in health and reported being tired of doctor's appointments, hospitalization, and rehab. Yet she never missed an appointment. But in rehab, she refused physical therapy and told the therapist she was scheduled for 9 o'clock. It's now 9.10. You weren't here. So I have other things to do. <laughs> so so try, come, try again tomorrow, but keep the schedule. She made me promise to make sure she died in her own home. I just said, okay, but told her I don't run things. I don't know when and where you'll die. She then said, I want family taking care of me at home. Being skeptical if, if that would happen. But now that I think about it, she probably knew something that I didn't because, uh, or she had an insight and that it would work out just as she had hoped for. As over the years, family members have taken turns being with her. Several years ago, she had surgery. Heather Tian Von Tenika and I were at the hospital. When we were allowed to see her in ICU, she looked at us and she smiled. I'm still here, I didn't go. Then she said, June, what a way you look pretty. Come a little closer. I know that outfit. I gave that to you. <laughs> Let me see if, if the shoes you're wearing is mine. <laughs> Tien and Heather thought it was the effects of anesthesia, but I knew better. That was not. <laughs> well, she was a shareholder of Macy's. I'd accompany her to Macy's sales as requested. The challenge was when she got there, she would not acknowledge her true size and insist, insisted that she was a smaller medium. I knew it was going to be a second trip for me anyway. So as she paid for her small size, I purchased her real size <laughs> and returned the small ones later. Then I asked, what are you going to Macy's for again today? She said, to get a few items to fill up the U-Haul to take to 117. Mm -hmm. I often accused her of exhibiting similar behaviors she had identified in her brother. She'd say, June, make you so blunt. You don't hold back or weigh your words when you're talking to me, your elder cousin. Mm -hmm. When she wasn't happy with me, she'd give me the silent treatment for a few days. Then the calls would pick up. Family members would designate me, being the calm and quiet one, to get certain points over to her. So I took some of those blends. It's okay. Perrine SDA. We could say was the best thing to narrate a G since sliced bread. You made a, a very positive impact on her. She, she developed real strong bonds over the years. Sister Rose. Sister Gloria. 
Brother and Sister Beckford, Sister T, Brother Christopher, Pastor, Loy and Hazel, to name a few. Thank you for being there for her. When I visited on a weekend, she encouraged me to accompany her to church. She'd say, don't tell me you brought no dress. Mine fits you okay. You can wear it. I'd say, oh, no, miss. You'd tell the congregation I'm wearing your dress. <laughs> and you'd be probably hijacking all the compliments associated with that, so I won't. As the weekend came to a close, she'd say, bribing me now to stay until the day I'm going back to work. You can leave here and go to work and get there on time. Just stay, I'll make you lunch so you can take to work. And you can even wear one of my favorite suits. Naretta G, the fighter, as the disease process hindered some of her daily activities, which again and again, she regained strength. And that independent nature would rekindle. Tian, June, Enrico, please don't leave until you give me a little practice with my driving so I can drive to church, grocery, and the doctors again. Her niece, Dale, visited from the UK. <laughs> the driver to Publix that day was Miss Nur. That was our last flight as she hit the gas and we were often piggybacking on the vehicle in front of us. <laughs> Get into Publix parking lot. I said, thank you, God. I quickly went over and said, may I have the keys, Aunt Nur? She, while she inquired of the others how her driving was. I said, that's the last ride for me from you. <laughs> if you insist on driving back home, you do so solo as we will walk. <laughs> she was blessed as Tian, Vaughn, Bev, Sheila, Colleen, Java, and our inducted family member, Alvin, <laughs> gave her undivided attention. Thank you all. Friend Joan, Thank you. Nurse Joan, thank you. In her latter days of in her latter days of life, as the youngsters would say, she blew up my phone asking me to beg Bev to come prepare those scrumptious meals that she never ceased to talk about. Bev came, granted her request, and along with Sheila, Alvin, and Tanika, fed and cared for her. Alvin, she couldn't understand or accept it why you listened to me when I told her she could no longer ride in your SUV. She had to use a wheelchair transport. She didn't like that. So I, I labeled her driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> After the death of her brother, Uncle Don, Aunt Nar called me and asked me to go on a mission with her. It was to the funeral home. And some of her desires were put into place then. No, the memories are numerous and diverse. You touch lives, said and did what suited you best, manip manipulated some of us family members when you could, encouraged us, giggled at our success and just showed us pure love. My life would be less complete if I never met and developed a strong relationship with you now. When will we ever forget you, Miss Legalistic? Thank you for being my friend and confidant and a caring cuz. Thank God, memories don't leave like people do. Rest on the comforting arms of God. You will agree with me that that was well said, well done. And the memories are pleasant. Now on the church side, we also have pleasant memories, memories rather, of our beloved Sister Berlin. So we're going to have uh, Sister Rose representing 
the Parine Seventh-day Adventist Church. After that, I'll come back and read a tribute from Elder Christopher, which will follow. Good afternoon, everyone. My reflection of Sister Berlin dates back to early 2005, when on a Sabbath, without being invited by anyone, she came to Perrine Church to worship with us. She had recently attended some meetings held by Pastor David McConnell. She sensed the need for a closer walk with God. She visited regularly and became a member of my Sabbath school class. Sister Beckford and myself befriended her and offered to study the Bible with her. She responded, I'll let you know when I'm ready. Not long after, she indicated that she was ready. We had a 9 a.m. Monday morning weekly meeting appointment. It was such a pleasure to meet with her. She was always ready, neatly dressed, smiling, and welcomed us with open arms. It was a joy to study with her. And likewise, it was a joy to see her go into the watery grave of baptism October 1, 2005. She became an ardent member of our church. It was not long thereafter that she became ill. During her long bout with illness, her confidence, faith, and steadfast hope of our Lord Jesus were in no, and steadfast hope in the soon coming of our Lord Jesus were in no way shaken. She was a woman of superlatively high standard and complete integrity. I'm sorry. We admired the close relationship with which she had with her family. And we have often said that she must have been an integral part of their life to be treated as such. They took turns making sure that someone was always with her. They came from England, Canada, New York, Maryland, Jamaica, and seemingly from the islands of the sea. As one left, another came. We meet today under the shadow of a great loss. Though the certainty of death and the uncertainty of life is ever before us, each visit of the Grim Reaper brings sorrow and humbles us in our mad struggle for glory and fulfillment of admission, of ambition. Her passing leaves an aching void that this world can never fill. Let us cherish the memories of the time we shared with her. To June and other members of the bereaved family, please accept profound condolences from Pastor Canute Brown, our pastor, and the members of the Perrine Seventh-day Adventist Church. Sorry, and the members of the Perrine Seventh-day Adventist Church family. Drawing consolation in the fulfillment of her life's services to you and to her fellow men. Let me remind you that the last word is not said at the funeral. The cemetery is not the final resting place. Heaven is real and Jesus himself will be there. 
he's going to prepare a place for us. And soon, if faithful, he's coming to receive us unto himself. Let us make our calling and election sure, so that when he comes, it will be well with our souls. May God bless all of you. We will make a slight adjustment to the program where we have Helen Theophane for song. We will move that down just before the message. So after I'm through with the tribute from Elder Christopher, that is Glenn Christopher, we'll have the scripture reading, the song, eulogy, the tributes, and then we will uh, make that adjustment and having Helen singing for us just before the message. Tribute to Noretta Berlin from Elder Glenn Christopher. I first met Sister Berlin on a Sabbath morning. She came with Sister Phyllis Rose to my Sabbath school class. I noted that she was a very mild-mannered and soft-spoken individual. She would listen very intensely to the discussions that took place. I encouraged her to give her input, but she would politely decline. She said she would rather listen. As time went by on my job, would as time went on, my job would sometimes take me out of town for extended periods. I was not always able to call her or visit as I would have liked to, but I would call her along with other members of my Sabbath school class to check up on them to see how they were doing. I learned of her illness while I was working out of town. When I returned home on breaks, I would visit her. One thing I could say about her, her is that she always had a positive attitude. She knew how to lean on the arms of omnipotence for encouragement. I would like to say to her family, yes, she will be missed. Yes, it hurts that she has been taken from us but keep in mind that David in Psalm 116 and verse 15 states, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. The Lord has seen it fit to allow her to be laid to rest. Rest until that day, great day, when Christ the life giver returns and calls her back to life. It is then she and countless others will exchange our mortal bodies for immortal ones. And we will all be glowing with the newness of life and will be caught up in the air to live with Christ, our blessed Savior, never to part or shed a sorrowful tear again. Family, let us all endeavor to join our dear sister on that sea of glass at that monumentous event when Christ shall embrace the saved of the earth. Elder Glenn Christopher. So this time we will have the scripture reading followed by the hymn, eulogy, and the other tributes. We'll Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. God is good and is good all the time. The second lesson will be taken from Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from hence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. 
The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth even forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We may sit and sing, Blessed Assurance. This is it. It's found in your program. All right, if someone else can read it out for us, so just Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Hero of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, wash in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Learn and submit. Visions of rapture, now works on my side. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Glorious admission, all is at rest.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Valerie, and I'm one of Noretta's niece. As you can figure out, she has a lot of nieces. I want to thank you all for being here today to honor her. Um, she was actually not a person who liked a lot of attention, so I'm not sure if she'd be really happy to know that we're doing this, but we have chosen to honor her in this way. I got to know Aunt Nora more when she came to live with my family and I in Spanish Town when I was very young. I remember there were very fond memories with me and my aunt. She never raised her voice at me and my brother. And um, one of the things that fascinated me about her was how very proper she was. I remember how Aunt Nora would eat bread and butter with a, with a knife and fork. And I always like, who does that? But that was Aunt Nora. She was very, very prop proper. It was very sad when she finally left um, Spanish Town. She had, because she was committing to Kingston. So it became too much, I believe, for her. So she moved. The relationship never waned. She still stayed in touch with us um, throughout the years. And then there was a break when she left um, completely from Jamaica. I think she went to Bahamas and she went to New York. So um, that whole relationship kind of got broken until um, she moved to Florida. And then we moved to Florida in like 1980. So once we moved here, that relationship kind of um, came back into play and we started visiting her in, in Perrine. For us, it was a long drive because we've always lived in Broward. So for us, it was like, we're packing a picnic basket and we're gonna go visit Aunt Nora. Um, consequently, consequently um, one of the things I remember, my brother and I, when we went to visit Aunt Nora, we came to visit Aunt Nora. We knew that she loved certain things. She, was, she only ate certain things. So one of the things we always try to do is to get her fish and she loved goat fish. So Peter and I would always like, well, let's go find some fish to bring to Aunt Nora. And um, one of the things I also know, and Peter may not think this, but I think I was very special to Aunt Nora. And one of the things is, <laughs> one of the things she said is how similar we were in physique, in our height and in the way we looked. And we had a lot of fun. We were always like measuring each other to see who was taller and who was fatter and who had the biggest, you know, I know you got the point. So we had a lot of fun with that. It was always a lot of fun to be around Aunt Nora. And one thing um, I also remember is every time I would call Aunt Nora and talk to her, she was always concerned about the family. She always wanted to know, how was your mommy? How was this person? How was this person? And then she would also keep me in touch with my other relatives. She would say, so Vaughn is doing this and Lavine is doing this and this person is doing this. And she kept me in touch with the family because I'm not very good at staying in touch with my family. Sorry. But Aunt Nora would let me know what's going on. Um, her laughter, Aunt Nora's laughter, I'll always remember. And the smile, I would never, ever forget. I'm very grateful to the times that we had, that I had to spend with her. And I'm grateful for just before she left us, being able to tell her on the phone how much I loved her and to be able to pray for her. And just knowing, even though she wasn't responding verbally, I heard the groans, I know she heard me. So I'm very, very grateful for that. Philippians 1, uh, 3 said, I thank God upon remembrance of you. So I thank God in remembrance of my Aunt Nora. Goodbye, sweet auntie. Look forward to seeing you soon and dress well in your father's loving presence. Thank you. I understand the slideshow is ready, so we will take this time. So we won't have to break again. We will go from here into the rest of the tributes and then into the Family.
Pleasant memory indeed. So yeah, we will now continue with the tributes. Yes. <clears throat> Beautiful, Debbie. Good afternoon. As we reflect the life and the thanksgiving for Aunt Nar, it's incumbent upon us to truly give thanks and acknowledge someone who has been there for Aunt Nar and has played a significant role with her throughout thick and thin and was at her side up to the moment she peacefully depart from us. From all of us, nieces, nephews, cousins, relatives and friends, to the professor June Johnson, thank you for, thank you. You were there for Aunt Nor when no one else was. You made it seems as if you were just a stone throw away despite the many miles you had to travel from Broward. You never choose to go to her rescue without all the fruits and vegetables and ground provision she enjoyed. One would have thought that you live on a farm or hell shares in a farmer's market. And let's not forgotten the countless containers of soups and different meals that were prepared and stored in the refrigerator for her convenience. I could go on and on, but I just want you to know that I sincerely appreciate all the kindness shown throughout her illness. Even though she often referred to me as her daughter from Jamaica, which is you, June. You were more than a daughter to her. You are a tower of strength. Your poor kindness and patience will never be, ever be forgotten. May the Heavenly Father bless you abundantly. And on now, may your soul rest in peace and light perpetually shine upon you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Debbie Berlin. I'm Aunt Nur's grandniece. I'm first going to read on behalf of my Aunt Dale, Aunt Nur's niece in England. She entitles her tribute letter to my sister aunt. Dear Aunt Nur, I won't risk upsetting you on this important occasion by speaking out your, loud your full name, for no matter how proud your big brother Bert, my dad, was that he had named you, I know that you never were very fond of the name, especially the middle one. <laughs> to tell the truth, it is a bit stuffy for the bright, happy young thing you used to be when we all lived together in Jamaica in the 1960s. You and your older sister, Aunt Alvis, had been really outnumbered by those six burly brothers of yours. So it was no wonder after Aunt Avis married and moved to live in Patson that you chose to leave the rural backwoods of Southfield to join us in Kingston. That was a real bonus for me, for before you came, Mom, Dorothy, and I also lived in a house full of males. You allowed me to experience the joy and companionship of growing up with an older, quote, sister. When the time came to immigrate, it was no coincidence that you chose to travel to the U.S., though Bert had chosen England. I know that in your mind, you had the need to be not too far away from your parents, especially your mother, who was known as Mayma by her children and grandchildren alike. I know that like us, you found the cold of New York alien and difficult to bear. So as soon as you could spread your wings again, like the yellow bird and flew to Miami, which is after all much closer to home. Over the years, you made many trips back to Jamaica, always bringing lots of love, merriment and goodies back to the family who are always in your thoughts and your heart. In fact, I know that one of the greatest pleasures you derived from establishing your comfortable home and lifestyle in Miami was so that you could accommodate and treat your family who naturally gravitated towards you. I know that your drive to work hard and establish a successful career as a legal secretary in a difficult, oppressive environment was, of course, 
to fund your independence, increase your self-worth, develop a comfortable lifestyle. I also know that is only half of the story because your pride in your achievements, which led you to take on the extra responsibilities of becoming a notary or JP as we Brits call it, was also so that you could comfortably entertain and accommodate your large family in your lovely home. Although you did not have children of your own, you were never short of nephews, nieces, cousins, and other family who would gravitate towards you. When we familial quote house guests sometimes got on your nerves, but then cause you to thaw, laugh off your worries, you would teasingly remind us, that's why I had so much a uno. <laughs> <laughs> which would always lead to a big tension busting belly laugh auntie you are quote one of a kind and i love you and miss you so know this lady you will always have a place in my heart rest in peace and that once again is from aunt dale who is joining us from zoom much love to you aunt dale now i will say my own words <clears throat> for aunt nur aunt nur was such a sweet auntie so lovable and huggable. I loved our hugs and chats on her couch. And she had a fun sense of humor. When I'd phone, hi, Otner, she'd say, hello, Deborah. And I'd say, hello, Noretta. <laughs> and we'd both laugh. Sometimes she'd say we were like sisters. And I'd reply, yeah, you're my younger sister. I got to keep an eye on you. <laughs> and she'd give a deep chuckle. My favorite memory of Aunt Nur was doing a visit to her when she had just begun using her walker. It was myself, Tanika, Miss June, and Sheila gathered in the house, and we started playing reggae music and convinced her to all lead us in a conga line. There she was laughing and swaying her hips, and we were all so full of love, joy, and laughter. It was always fun spending time with Aunt Nur from my visit as a teenager, where I got to spend the summer with my cousin, Debbie Ann, to surprise visit plan with cousins, Peter and Judith, to meeting cousin Jav at her house while on a road trip with my boyfriend, Anton, whom she took to right away. And so many other times, Aunt Nurse home was a gathering place for meeting family and reuniting, as well when I traveled with my mom and brother and his wife. And so I feel Aunt Nur's greatest legacy is the family she brought together. And through our continued and growing love for each other, we will honor her memory and her beautiful life. Now I'm going to read a poem that I read for Aunt Trish, her niece at her service. And I'm going to sing a song that I sang for Grandpa Oslin, her brother, at, and Aunt Trish at their service. And I feel that reading this poem and singing the song brings together the memories of our family at this time. <clears throat> the poem is entitled, She is Gone, by David Harkins. <clears throat> you can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she'll come back, or you can open your eyes and see all she's left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, or you can be full of the love you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she's gone, or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what she'd want, smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. <clears throat> How do I say goodbye to what we had? The good times that made us laugh outweigh the bad. I thought we'd get to see forever, but forever's gone away. And it's so hard to say goodbye 
to yesterday. I don't know where this road is going to lead. All I know is where we've been and what we've been through. And if we get to see tomorrow, I hope it's worth all the wait. Cause it's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday so i will take with me the memories to be my sunshine after the rain because it's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. So I will take with me the memories to be my sunshine after the rain. Cause it's so hard to say goodbye it's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday goodbye atner Good afternoon. I'm Peter Berlin, um, one of Aunt Nora's nephews. Um, my dad, Val, is one of her brothers, um, one of the seven siblings. Well, my dad, because he went away to high school and he went away to different in institutions, we didn't really get to know a lot of our family members growing up um, from that side of the family. However, Aunt Nora was kind of the exception because um, Every house that we are, she's kind of pop up there, have nowhere she's coming from or wherever, but she's kind of just shows up, you know, just, just pops up anywhere. So it's one of those things, you know, we just knew of her, but we didn't know where she was going or whatever. But we knew that we had an aunt nor there's for, later on, several years later, she came to live at our house, live at our house at Spanish Town, my mother there and my sister Valerie. Um, you know, that sister who thinks she's extremely close to Aunt Nor. Um, but, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, that we, she came to live at our house with us. And even while she was there, Aunt Nor was just a moving, moving target. She's never home. She's just early morning. She's out late nights. You know, she's coming back. She's a hard worker. She was always in and out the house. You know, it's what old fashioned Jamaican people would call like a walkabout. That was Aunt Nora. She was on the move, you know, once in a while we had dinner together or something, but most of the time Aunt Nora was just moving. And later on, when I thought back of it, I suspect my parents knew about her personality because one of the odd things is that my parents, their room, which had, they had their room and then the front door, their room had an exit to outside they moved and shifted to another room and gave her the front room because I suspect they knew that she was going to be in and out the house all night and they didn't want her to disturb them. I think, you know, because my mother actually loves her sleep, she probably doesn't want Atner to be disturbing her. So she had, they actually gave her that room. So that was Aunt Nor. Later on, my Aunt Nor, she left 
and she went to New York. Mm -hmm. So we hadn't seen her for a little bit, as my sister mentioned. But then later on, our family, we had like a family vacation and we went to New York during our summer. So we visited her there in Queens, New York at the time. You know, and this is truly out in our, as soon as we got here, she started introducing us to people who are our cousins and family and so forth. You know, I very young at the time, so I don't remember most of them. I just remember one gentleman, I think his name Arthur Duffus. Yeah, and yeah, he was there. And he, the only reason I remember it, because he took us to Empire State Building. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but yes, I remember. But that was my, you know, cousins. And Aunt Nor would tell us, you know, these are your cousins. You know, one of the things you have to realize in, if non-Jamaicans in the Jamaican vernacular for cousin, because that could mean anything around here, you know, because so Aunt Nor, some of the times she had to, you know, I was kind of the inquisitive one. So I'd ask, you know, when she said, oh, it's your cousin how is he my cousin you know but then you know because as i said in jamaica you could this cousin thing could be could be the plumber the butcher that knew your grandmother grandfather whatever knew him five five you know five decades ago and then by years you know they decide that we're cousins but anyway i nor was the one to legitimize these cousins she would actually tell us where they're from and whose family and so forth so that's one of the things, you know, I really appreciate about her. Even later on, she would do that for me. And I'd ask her, so how is that person, my cousin? And then she was like, okay, well, you know, your uncle from da 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 so, so that was all great. Later on, you know, she didn't, we didn't see again because, of course, that was a vacation. So we went back to Jamaica. At that time, later on, she moved from New York. And then she moved down to Perrine, Florida. Um, did not know any about her whereabouts at that point, but then I later on found out that her other brother, Oslin, was in the area. I'm not sure if he came after or before, but I know he was somewhere around. And as Miss Heather here could tell us, you know, because um, she was married to Kenny, and I think in general that general area, they were all Perrine. It was like another Berlin clan forming over here in Perrine area. But you, so later on, our family, we moved also, as my sister also mentioned, we moved to South Florida. We were in North Miami. She was in South. We didn't see her for a little bit. But then later on, we were able to um, link with her, especially when she moved after that to the house that's in Deering now. That's the house that we all know, um, the meeting place that we all meet at. But that house, that was the house that Aunt Nora always said, to us, I know June and several other people. I work so hard for this place. I'd rather die here than die in a nursing home or die in a hospital. You know, thank God, you know, her wish came true for that. But at that house, that house in Deering, I call it Deering area. This, yeah, thank you, Ms. Flo. Ms. Flo, a neighbor from that area also, thank you. <laughs> right. I wouldn't, you know, we'd go to the house at any time and there's, you know, sometimes I, what I used to do, drive in from work on Friday evenings, I would never told her I'm coming. I just do what she did to me as a child. I just showed up. <laughs> so, so when I showed up there, a lot of times, you know, there would be people there. Uh, sometimes I'm wondering, is there a party? I don't know, just didn't tell me about it. But I was like, okay. There's always, you know, from her area, you could park next to her car. Most of the times it's filled. So I'm parking around the side and all that. You're going and there's family members and she's introduced me uh, oh peter oh good hi peter oh this is your cousin <laughs> so you know first then you know she kind of gave me the look like real cousin <laughs> okay <laughs> so i was like okay thanks and we kind of found out you know met a lot of family members there met um even cousin dick over there i met debbie there also met um dean there i met June Tanika, several other people there that, you know, I met several of her friends there, Miss Flo. And by the way, Miss Flo, the mango tree I got from you, it's blooming. And, <laughs> uh, and also met Miss Joan, several of them. I met Sister Rose and I, I always say Aunt Nora, Sister Rose and Sister Rose's sisters. How are they doing? And you know, met them there also at Aunt Nora's house. It was always, you know, just this grand meeting place of people, friends, family, we all had a good time there. Friday evenings for me was, you know, just fun to drive down there to see her. Later on, when Aunt Nora was starting to, the health, her health was declining. Um, a lot of these families and friends that used to just show up to help her out in the past. Um, 
I think of like my cousin Vaughn. Vaughn would just show Vaughn had her own medical issues, but she showed up to help Aunt Nor, stayed there extended times. Then Vaughn would go back, Tian, um, Sheila, Beverly, and several other people. It's just too numerous to mention. I apologize for those who I haven't mentioned. Um, Jenny, I remember also, Heather. But after all those, all this time, all these people when Aunt Nor really became sick. These people are all there to help her. It, it's like what she read, you know, the, the kindness came back to her. All these people, Miss Joan also would help her take her to visits and so forth, hospital doctors visits and so forth. You know, that's one thing I've always remembered. They always, there always were people there to help her. And they, that's just a testament to her life, how she helped others and how she cared for others. They always showed that care for her, especially in times of need. Um, about three days before her going on, passing on to be with the Lord, I was at the house and we kind of talked a little bit while she was in bed, um, realizing that it would be close to the end, you know, from, I could see it from just her demeanor and so forth. And we talked a little bit about, you know, and I was talking to her about forgiveness and all that, you know, forgiveness. And I was talking to her about peace and all that things. Aunt Nora, she kind of like said to me, okay. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Then she was like, she was very weak at the time, but then she took her hand up and she started massaging my hand. And she was like, thank you, Peter. And then she said, thank you for everything. Then she said, thank you for coming. You know, at that point, I, you know, I just had the peace. I knew that she was comfortable, ready and ready to go. I just had that peace. Um, finally, you know, her last day, happened to be Mother's Day. And I thought it was very telling because this person who was a mother to a lot of people, who was like, you know, the aunt who was a mother and she happened to pass on Mother's Day. Um, it wasn't surprising. I shouldn't say not surprising to me, but I had that feeling. And I think I mentioned it to a few people that Aunt Nora might be going on Mother's Day. But um, when she went on Mother's Day, I thought it was an appropriate time if there's ever such a thing to go. But I had, I knew that she was at peace and I had a peace within myself also um, that she was in a better place. You know, one of those things that when we think about it, excuse me. When we think about it and in terms of peace, we knew, I definitely knew she was at peace. Um, I am reminded of a scripture in Isaiah that I recently read, which mentioned, it's, I'm su summarizing it, Isaiah 57, where it mentioned that the righteous or good people, so to speak, the righteous people, people righteous within the Lord, when they're taken away, they're actually taken away from evil, taken away from this evil world, and they rest in peace. That to me, when I saw that scripture, it reminded me of my aunt. So as I would say, I know you're in peace, my dear aunt. So God bless you. And I hope to see you soon. And peace be with you all, with all of us. Take care. Good afternoon. I am grateful to the sister, friend to Sister Berlin. I always visited her. Well, she kept drag somebody with me to go give us some chair up, and she always appreciated that. And I am very grateful. I was able to meet with her with a beautiful smile and her soft words. And my son over here, where is my son? <laughs> because they, 
he was very fond of him. I'm going to sing a song. I know there's not much time left. Dying with Jesus, my death reckon mine. Living for Jesus, a new life divine. Looking to Jesus till glory of shine. Moment by moment, O oh Lord, I am dying. Never a trial that he is not there. Never a burden that he doth not bear. Never a sorrow that he doth not share. Moment by moment, I'm under his care. Moment by moment, I'm kept in his love. Moment by moment of life from above. Living to Jesus till glory doth shine. Moment by moment, oh Lord, I am thine. Never a weakness that he doth not feel. Never a sickness that he cannot heal. Moment by moment in war or in will, Jesus, my Savior, abides with me still. Moment by moment I've kept in his love. Moment by moment of life from above. Looking to Jesus till glory doth shine. Moment by moment, oh Lord, I am We have that blessed assurance that Jesus is with us. He's with us in this life, in the time of sickness, in the time of sorrow, in the time of stress and distress. He's with us in the moments of joy. Gladness. There is never a time when Jesus is not with his children. But we also have the assurance from his word that in the time of death, he's with us. He's with us. And from the scriptures that I will share for the few minutes that we have left in celebrating this precious life, we will see that Christ has not forgotten his children, will not forget his children, and that he's truly with us. A little over, or almost five years ago, I came to the district church of Perrine, and within a short time, I was taken around to the shut-in members of the church to get acquainted, to visit, to share precious moments. And Sister Berlin was among the first that I visited. I did not know what to expect. I was given a little briefing. We we're going to go to see the sister. It's not been able to come out of church and she has been ill for a while. When I got to the home and I was introduced and I made myself or getting acquainted. And I discovered that uh, she was so positive as stated earlier. She never appeared to be somebody who was sick 
think in terms of what she was saying and how she was talking, because she was just positive and had a good uh, posture towards life. I could see that she was gracious. She was loving. She was kind. We spent the time together, prayed with her, and went home with that very clear vision of somebody who's, who knows what life is all about, even in her illness. Subsequently, I visited her serving communion and sharing good times with her. I noticed that her house, even in her sickness, and uh, was well kept. And everything was in order. And that impressed me greatly as to the type of person she was. She was a valiant soldier of the cross in the short time that she became a Seventh-day Adventist. Ardent member said, now she rests. She rests, but she's not forgotten. And so I want to share with you a passage today. Quickly, you'll have to follow because I'm going to move with speed in order to get to the great side uh, in, in a short time. But I want to share a word of hope and comfort with you today. Revelation chapter 14, reading verse 13, it says, Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works. Follow them. Psalm 116, verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, for there is hope. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. For me, by interpretation, it means that the child of God in death is not forgotten. This world seemingly has become a hopeless place. There's a sense of hopelessness almost in every phase, circumstance, and situation of life. Also in every field of career and profession of life, especially in the health profession, in relation to sickness and death, hopelessness. And this COVID time, has brought that out so clearly, a sense of hopelessness in our world. There is so much despair, sickness, suffering, pain, and death in our world and around us. Oftentimes we feel a sense of hopelessness. There's nothing that has made this clearer, I just said, than this pandemic crisis. There is nothing that has brought this home closer than COVID-19, which we are still experiencing. However, I'm here in these few minutes today, here today, and at this occasion in the celebration of life of Sister Berlin, which we regret her passing, but I'm here to tell you that we have this hope. We have this hope. It's no ordinary hope. And I am saying it as to this hope, demonstratively, this hope. Amidst the darkness of this world, there is this hope. What is this hope? It is a hope that is found in Jesus. It is a hope, I say, that is found in Jesus, the one who says, because I live, you shall live also. The one who says, I am the resurrection and the life. You who believe in me, though you were dead, yet shall you live, shall he live. The one who says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. 
It's final. It's all set. I am alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and of death. Oh, this hope is found in the one who says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there he may be also. This is profoundly reassuring to know that there's a hope that will take us beyond the grave. There's a hope that will outlast the sicknesses and the diseases that we experience in this life. This hope is not just a wishful thinking, as in hoping for something to happen or something will happen. This is what this is not what the Bible means by this hope, the blessed hope. That's not what it means here, a wishful thinking. The biblical definition of hope is confident expectation. We can have confidence in the life hereafter. We can have confidence in the coming of Jesus. We can have confidence that this life is just temporary, but there's a better life coming because of Jesus. You see, hope is a firm assurance regarding things that are unclear and unknown. Without hope, life loses its meaning. This hope is about eternal life. That death does not have the final word. That life does not end in the grave. This hope is about the second coming of Jesus. This hope is about seeing Jesus or Savior. Yes. Jesus is the hope of glory. That's why the song says, we will see him face to face. Uh, we shall behold him. For beloved sister Berlin has such hope, such confidence, such confident expectation in all the above. And she was not afraid of death. She was not afraid to die. She had this hope. So today, we share with her how cheering is a Christian's hope. While toiling here below, it buoys us up. While passing through this wilderness of woe, it buoys us up while passing through this wilderness of woe. Yes, she was sick. And she was afflicted. She was not able to enjoy the company of her fellow believers at church. Oftentimes, yes, she would share in the service at a distance. But she had this hope in her. And it kept her going. The righteous who has this trustful hope in God have a general confidence in God's protection and God's help. And to, uh, free, to, to free them from fear and anxiety. And even when they pass through the valley of the shadow of death, they will fear no evil, for they know that God is with them. My friends, family members, Sister Berlin had this hope. Hope that a change will come. Even Though she may go to the grave like Job, there is a hope that will lead us into an everlasting change wherein we'll see Christ face, face to face. Uh, so you need this hope. You need this hope. Paul speaks about this hope, that this hope is a surviving hope. It's a hope that will survive death. It's a hope that will survive pain. Let me close here by saying this hope that we have in Jesus, this hope that I'm here telling you about, this hope that is found in scripture, this hope will survive. Hope will survive 
your despair. Hope that will survive your anxieties and cares. Hope that will survive suffering and pain. This hope that is in Jesus will survive sickness, uh, uh, sicknesses and diseases. This hope will go beyond cancer and dementia. This hope will survive arthritis and diabetes. This hope will go beyond the isses and, uh, and tisses of diseases. Can I tell you that this hope will survive death and the grave. This hope will survive sin and Satan who has tormented us in this life. For that old rascal who tried to rob us of eternal life uh, is a defeated foe. And one day, Jesus is going to come back and fix this problem of death. He's going to come back and fix this problem of sickness and the grave. Jesus is going to come back and fix our suffering and our pain. And the Bible says that we will have life everlasting with him. We have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. This hope shines brighter and brighter each day for the Christian, even though this world is getting darker and darker in sin. This hope blows within our hearts. This is why we sing, how sweet are the tidings that greets the pilgrims here as he wanders in exile from home. Soon, soon will the Savior in glory appear. And soon will the kingdom come. I'm here to tell you today in this short discourse that he's coming. He's coming. Jesus is coming. He's coming, coming soon, I know. And the weary pilgrims will to glory go when the Savior comes to reign. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah again. Soon and faithful, we all shall be there. So be watchful, be hopeful, be joyful till then. And a crown of bright glory will wear. He's coming with confidence and with hope. I can say he's coming. Coming soon, I know. Coming back to the south again. And the weary pilgrims, even though in the dust of the grave, will to glory go when the Savior comes to reign. You be ready for that moment. From all indications, she was ready. You be ready for that moment when Jesus comes to take his home to the celestial city where there'll be joy forevermore. May you and I be faithful for that moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On behalf of the uh, Prime Seven Adventist Church and the family, we are grateful that you're here. Um, this is the end of the this part of the ceremony, and we'll be moving towards the uh, the gravesite. I think we're running a little bit behind; they're waiting for us outside. So at this time, we'll um, we'll ask you to please stand while we pray and transition from here to the gravesite. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the privilege of being here this afternoon. Dear Lord, we, we thank you for allowing us to experience the life of, of Sister Berlin. Dear Lord, she, has been, she's a, she was a wonderful person in life, dear Lord. And, and we, we thank you again for the blessing of knowing her. Father, as we move from here and, and go to the gravesite, let us remember, dear Lord, even though we are putting her, her body in, in a hole, dear Lord, that, that her spirit, her, her mind, her, I mean, the spirit, her, her life, dear Father, is one that will live on with us forever. Lord, we know that uh, you will be coming soon. And when you return, dear Father, we are all looking for that hope that, that she will be called out of the grave and be told, Lord, this is the one that um, you've been waiting for. So dear Father, thank you again for this life. Thank you again for everyone here. 
let us all um, give our hearts to you, give our minds to you, and let, allow you to control our destinies, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, we will now turn it over to the...